Hi, my name is uh, Rick Mosier and I work for the City of Olathe, Kansas Fire Department as a firefighter. And uh, we're a city of about 135,000 population. Uh, we're about 30 minutes south of downtown Kansas City along Interstate 35. And for many years we were a standalone city that provides many uh, self-contained city services. We have uh, eight fire companies in our city and seven strategically located firehouses uh, between two battalions. and. We're an ISO class one fire department and we're also a commission on fire service accreditation accredited fire department. So uh, today I'm going to walk you guys through our new Pierce Velocity uh, midship pumper and this is a total redesign started with our last engine as a two year project. So uh, we've got a lot of innovative features here that make it a true aggressive firefighting machine for our uh, aggressive firefighting style in Olathe. So, uh, First things on the uh, front of the apparatus. For many years we had a uh, Mars light or a Federal Crossfire light. We've returned to a Mars uh, 888 light or traffic breaker to uh, really clear intersections for us and also to hit the back of uh, rear view mirrors of cars for safety. And uh, we found it to be very effective. We actually went with the LED version of this light and uh, so far it's worked very well for us. The, uh, the other thing that we'll hit here in a little bit on the front bumper is the uh, front intake. So we'll talk about that when we come back around. There's some innovative features on that. One of the great features we added on the front of the cab that our engineers requested was the spotter mirror for the officer side so that when we're backing uh, in tight parking lots we can see the rear bumpers of vehicles and uh, also when we're making tight turns we can see vehicles as we make the corner. So it's actually come in very handy for us. We also have a front brow light so that when we pull up at car fires on the interstate or on the state highways or in normal streets at working fires we can turn that on and illuminate the front of the apparatus. Kind of uh, working our way down, we're super happy. We've had a 30-year partnership with Conrad Fire Equipment and have been very happy that, that, our, that they're our dealer. Uh, one of the really unique things that we did with this engine is we returned to a tread plate floor. And so what we wanted to do is go back to tread plate for durability and also to be able to facilitate cleaning the cab. You know, we know that there's a lot of bugs and things out there in today's fire service and we wanted to make sure we could sweep it out, wash it out if we needed to. And the other thing that we did is we made sure that we went back to heavy duty vinyl seats so they're easy to, to decon and wipe off as needed. And so those are some of the innovative features inside this apparatus that have made it more as I call it, fire ground efficient. As we move back here to the jump seat area, we have some roll-up door compartments inside of our cab, and basically in these compartments, we can store the uh, engineer's gear, and then we also keep some of our other tools on the other side, uh, air monitoring equipment and uh, sticker badges for the kitties. And one of the things that we wanted to do with this compartment is make sure that we could turn the LED lights on and off in it. So we actually have an external mounted light switch um, that allows us to turn the lights on and off manually in there. So if the door accidentally gets rolled up or gets left open, we can actually shut the lights off and it doesn't interfere or reflect at nighttime with the driver. Really open cab in the back and uh, we went with a full tunnel metal mount on the engine tunnel and that facilitates so we can mount our irons, we can get our can mounted back there and we can have our flashlights and it's not into the engine tunnel, it's just on the mounting plate. So we have our tools ready to roll for the uh, firefighter in the jump seat. We're, uh, like I said before, we're, we're a very aggressive fire department and so our guys like to ride backwards so we made sure that we had backwards facing jump seats included in the cab. And then here, this was an area of the cab that we found where there was uh, wasted space, unused, unutilized space. So we reverse hinged this compartment with the idea that we could mount brass on the upper shelf and we could put nozzles in the foamy ductor on the lower shelf. And that way it's reverse hinged so the engineer can just reach out at the panel, grab the needed tools and equipment, and uh, makes it very fast and efficient. We've added compartment door locks as we've done some station renovations. Uh, occasionally we've had the apparatus where we've had to park it outside and uh, we've had some other instances where we want to be able to lock the doors. So we do uh, on the cab we have keyless entry with uh, two keyless entry fobs and a code door and then on the compartments we have the locked lockable doors. So here on the pump panel this is one of the most exciting things about this engine that makes it truly fire ground ready is the fact that this is a 45 inch pump house. This is a non-control zone pump panel 
and we lowered our cross lace uh, six inches lower than standard with a handhold. Now, we have one inch and three quarter that pulls from either side, and we have one two and a half that pulls from either side. So, whichever way we pull up, if we pull up short at a fire and uh, have the truck company in front of us, we can still deploy our hose efficiently. All manual valves. So we have pulls, and then for our large diameter, for our deck gun, we also have uh, slow open, slow close manual valves. They're indicating valves. We want to make sure that they're indicating. So even on the front suction, we have a manually indicating valve. Uh, one of the great features that Pierce recommended to us is, well, you know, in, in our setting, we're a, an urban suburban fire department. We don't do a ton of drafting, but we added for very minimal cost, we added an additional air prime. So that way, if you don't bleed the front intake, you can give it a couple taps, get the air out of it before you open it up to induce the uh, water into your pump. One of the other great things, we worked with fire research um, pretty heavily talked with them about making sure that we had a pressure governor that would work flawlessly with the Detroit diesel engine and flawlessly with our 2000 GPM waterous pump. And we went with the Pump Boss 400. And so far, we have had phenomenal luck with it. It's a super smooth running pressure governor. It's very responsive to what we need. And the best part is it's got dual sensors on the intake and the discharge side of the pump so that it can recognize changes in the pump and keep us from having uh, unneeded cavitation alarms and things like that. So we're very happy with the pressure governor that we chose on this apparatus. Uh, we carry 550 gallons of water and we also have a 30 gallon uh, Class B foam cell. Now, we're not into big foam systems Systems. We really want to keep things simple in our department and we want to keep it operator friendly. So our 30 gallon foam cell is inside there, inside the tank. We have a fuel coupling on the outside that we can hook our foam eductor into. We just pop it, we hook it in, flip it open, and the foam comes out into the eductor and we can either hook it up to a stinger line off of our pre-connect or off of one of the two and a half discharges and we can supply foam without having to have a complicated foam system on the apparatus. So pretty standard compartments. Uh, one of the things that we changed to model after some of our other fire engines was we made sure that our front doors are split and we also made sure that our high sides are split. That way, you know, you don't have to reach really high to get the high side down and then also in the front, it reduces the amount of compartment that's out in traffic. We've always been a very big lap door fire department, so we really like them, uh, but we wanted to reduce the amount of room that took up in traffic when we were out there. Pretty standard features all the way around here, standard lighting and things. All right, so as we move to the back of the truck, one of the things we wanted to do is make sure that we have our hose bed lower. So we went 40 inches off the tailboard, uh, 67 inches from the lip of the hose bed to the ground, and so that allowed us to make sure that firefighters of normal height could deploy hose effectively. So we do two single stacks, an inch and three quarter, 200 foot on the rear, and a two and a half, 200 foot on the rear. One of the other cool things on the back here that we did is we lowered our hose bed dividers to the absolute height that they needed to be with handholds so that it doesn't cut you off at the waist as you start to uh, load hose. And then here in the rear compartment, we carry an electric uh, positive pressure fan, so sometimes we need to utilize that at uh, fires afterwards or we need to utilize it for CO calls. We have a, a shoreline plug back here that we can plug that fan into to charge the battery off the shoreline, so no longer do you have to run an extension cord to the back of the apparatus. We also tucked the rear cord reel uh, high up under the hose bed to get it out of the way so that we could gain a lot of usable space in the rear compartment. Now, like I said earlier, um, we're class one and we're also an accredited department, but we also provide advanced life support services from our fire apparatus. Uh, we've had a 41% uh, rate of getting cardiac arrest to the hospital, so it's a pretty positive thing, and that's part of our advanced life support care that we provide. So back here, we also have a shoreline plug so that we can charge our suction units in the rear EMS compartment. So that actually provides a lot of uh, benefit to us so we can keep things contained on the unit. Uh, side mounted ladders. So in addition to being ready to get hose quickly deployed at a working fire, because remember a well-positioned uh, well positioned hose line will save more lives than rescue alone, we wanted to make sure that if we needed to deploy our ground ladders, we could get them deployed rapidly and quickly. So we still go with a high side, low side body with externally mounted ground ladders. So here's the big thing about this engine that makes it a true fire engine, is the fact that uh, working with uh, Captain Dennis Laguerre, uh, retired from the Oakland Fire Department, uh, kind of going back and forth with some innovative ideas, we plumbed all of our gauges directly three inches from the discharge. So 
there are a couple areas where we had to plumb them off the valve due to, to length, but all of our gauges, instead of being plumbed like standard off of the drain, we actually plumb them off of the discharge. This way we can really dial in our pump discharge pressure for our combination and smooth bore nozzles. And so that gives us really, really accurate gauge readings. So the Pump Boss 400, the way that our gauges are plumbed, this engine is designed to move water, designed to be a good working fire fire engine. So that's some of the innovative things. Um, in this compartment here, we added a six foot all metal roof hook uh, tube there so you could deploy your roof hook. The firefighter climbing out with his iron set could also grab that quickly. And, uh, and then as we move back to the front through the cab, air horn pull chain so you can run the mechanical siren and make sure that you get the air horn. And then here on our front intake. So this is uh, in our last engine, this was our first return in quite a few years to our front intake. We made sure that so we could really move water with it, five inch pipe underneath, uh, minimize the elbows, even in the pump plumbing we minimized elbows. And then here, a six inch intake on top to minimize friction loss. And then we also have a hose storage tray up here. This was something that we worked with our dealer on in Pierce Engineering to get it to where we could store our LDH up here in the front so that we could rapidly connect to a fire hydrant. And then also on the side here on our intake, we went with a special bleeder valve. Instead of having the standard Trident big quarter turn valve, we went with the special bleeder so that it reduces the profile and does not make it difficult to get the uh, hose deployed out of there to connect to a fire plug. So those are some of the really innovative things that we've done with this engine to really make it fire ground efficient and make sure that we can move water rapidly and we can get water quickly on a working fire. And we can also respond effectively and efficiency to advanced life support and basic life support EMS calls. So thanks for your time today. Really hope that you enjoyed looking at our engine company number four and uh, we'll see you soon.